Okay, so we look at Borderlands 2 at 21 by 9. Now, this is a bloody brilliant game. When you play it, there is little question for why it was one of the best games of 2012, and it definitely had stiff competition that year. I will admit, I hadn't played this before, and it was only after I got gifted it by a sub that I started playing, and, well, I just haven't been able to stop playing since. Anyway, before I go into my thoughts on the game, let's go over the 21x9 support first. So it is native, there is ultra-wide support out of the box, and it is pretty damn good. Gameplay correctly shows off more on the sides of the screen with no pop-in or lighting issues, and this applies to when in a vehicle too. There is one moment when this isn't completely true though. When you sprint, watch what happens to the skybox. It suddenly no longer has the fog effect and becomes clear and, well, it actually looks pretty beautiful. So yeah, I'm running on low settings with view distance at the lowest setting, and I believe this is what is causing the effect. But yeah, it's only a little bit annoying, it's nothing too terrible, but you do notice it. The HUD scales to the sides somewhat, however not completely, so you have vertical and horizontal sliders to shift the HUD around, which is always nice. However, the horizontal ones stop a little short of the very edge, but they do go further than 16x9, so it's kind of a weird middle ground. Honestly, I don't have too much of a problem with this. As I always say, I wish all games had the ability to shift the HUD to any position you wish, so whilst this gives you that ability to an extent, it doesn't quite go far enough. But it's still a tick in the box that you can move it around, and furthermore, the ability to scale its size is fantastic, especially on a 1440p screen, as being able to make it smaller is lovely, as I always like to have the HUD be as unobtrusive as possible while still completely usable. Pre-rendered cutscenes are 16x9 with black bars. They have done exactly the best option with the situation, so not stretching or zooming in the image in any way. There aren't really in-game cutscenes per se, but there are character animation moments, if that's the best way to describe them, where you like raise your arm over the screen or something. And uh, yeah, anyway, these moments stay 21 by 9 and don't experience any issues with the extra screen space, i.e. showing more of the character arm correctly. In-game menus have a black shaded box, but this doesn't quite reach the extent of the screen space, so you get a slightly awkward view of the world behind on the very sides, and for alerts, like when you find a new object, there is a 16x9 shaded black section, however the edges are open to showing the world on the sides, so yeah, again, it's a bit weird. The main menu is not without similar issue too, so whilst it does correctly scale to fill the screen, and you can move the camera around with a live view of the world, some parts of the menu feature 16x9 shaded sections that slide around here, and that looks weird too. Luckily, there is only one moment in the whole game that I'm aware of that actually is displayed so badly that you can't visibly see what you should do, and that's the game's opening splash screen before you proceed to the main menu. Here, you just have to hit any button in order to load further, but yeah, because it's a zoomed image, you can't see the instruction, the button prompt to just click and go forwards. Luckily, it is so standard for games to have this kind of thing that it's obvious what to do. Loading screens, which admittedly you aren't even looking at for long as they're so fast, are the same as 16x9, but because of their design, they don't look noticeably out of place at 21x9. And when spawning in, the tunnel effect thing, like something out of Doctor Who, uses the full screen space. When downed, the sides of the screen correctly fade to black as well, and there's no awkward 16x9 cutoff. When dealt damage, the blood splashed on your screen uses the entire screen space, but it is only the case because it stretches to fill the extra screen space. Luckily though, the stretch isn't that obvious. When explosions occur and the screen flashes white, this white flash is only over the 16x9 section of the screen. Thankfully though, it's a very brief shot and it's not very noticeable that it doesn't fully extend to the sides of the screen as it is so brief. This game has many different weapons, and loads of different styles of zoomed sights. Unfortunately, they are all stuck to 16x9 with black bars on the side, so yeah. Unfortunately, they don't work great at 21x9. Using the vending machines is exactly like a 16x9, however you just see the world extended on the side, so it basically works perfectly. And picking up a vehicle features like a fluid, moving, grey background, but due to its movement, it shows off some of the world behind on the extremities, which is slightly annoying. Performance-wise, the game runs pretty well. 
I had my hopes up at the start as I was running it beautifully on higher settings, but as I got into more open areas and fights, the FPS died, so I've had to drop pretty much everything to low, but it still looks decent. And this is on a GTX 980 Ti at 3440x1440. What I should note is that you do need to restart the game to apply some graphics changes, which is always frustrating. However, I must say I'm pleased with the number of graphics options, and whilst not amazingly optimized, the game still runs well. That said, I'm running on a G-Sync monitor with up to 100 FPS possible, but I have to limit the game to 72 FPS because any higher would mean that the game actually wasn't perfectly smooth. It would output higher frame rates, but the image most certainly wasn't, well, smooth when you're panning around. It's hard to quite describe, but if you have a higher refresh monitor, try putting it to like an unlimited frame rate and just see what happens, or just a higher than 72 frame rate, and see if you find that the game is running smooth. It just doesn't quite feel it. Now I know this isn't great, but because I'm struggling to hit 60 FPS anyway, it didn't actually become an issue for me. However, in the future, when we do get those higher FPS levels with better GPUs and higher refresh rate monitors, I don't want this to come back and be a problem. So I probably don't need to tell many of you what this game is actually like to play, as it's so fantastic, most of you will have probably already played it. But for those of you unaware, it's a first person shooter set in a kind of spacey world where you'll fight lots of weird monsters, from those that crawl around like animals, to deranged enemies that all come together to create this rather batshit crazy world that is just great fun to explore. There is a huge amount of humour built into the game, with ridiculous missions, hilarious characters, and just a general fun sense of storytelling that makes the game a joy to play. Now, there are issues that stick out, like world traversal can be an effort at times, forcing you to keep walking back and forth over the same patches of land repeatedly, but generally this is a minimal issue. And also, there is a lot of DLC. I have the Game of the Year edition, and I still apparently don't have access to all the DLC for some reason. But yeah, if you are looking for a violent yet funny and well-designed first-person shooter, this is totally for you. I'm going to give Borderlands 2 a widest fuck score of 3. It's so very close to being a 4, but I just can't give it a 4 as there's just too many small bits that don't work at 21.9 properly. But it's by no means a game that's bad to play at 21.9. This gets a full unlimited recommendation from me. You will have a great time. Anyway, I hope that gives you some information on how the game runs at 21.9. Give this video a like if you found it helpful, and subscribe for future info. For any of the games at 21.9, head over to my channel. Hopefully I've covered it. If I haven't, then leave a comment down below and I'll try and cover it. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, the link's to my Patreon page in the description. See you later. something. Even if you do rescue Roland from this Firehawk guy, the Crimson Raiders ain't exactly long for this world. You know what? I think you deserve a little hint. My secret involves your pathetic resistance dying. And me laughing. <laughs> a lot.
Good.